Hi everybody, it's Saigon Sam here. It's July 18th, 2011. I know it's been about two years since I posted my last video, sorry about that. Uh, I no longer live in Ho Chi Minh City, but I've decided to extend this video series to suggest technologies and techniques for living well in a polluted urban environment. Um, and in this particular video, I'd like to present uh, a very good way to determine whether or not your bottled water is safe to drink. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be presenting you with a way to make, yes, make your own water from air. Uh, but first of all, before we get into that, uh, you're going to have to know about how a certain device works, and that is this. This is the AP2 conductivity meter from HM Digital. Um, if you look in the YouTube description, I'll leave you some links as to how to get one for yourself. Now, uh, let me talk first a little bit about conductivity before we get into the meter itself. So, conductivity is just the ability of water, in this case, to uh, conduct an electrical current. The higher the conductivity, the more easily electricity flows through the water. Now, one thing that makes it easy for electricity to flow is the presence of ions in the water, both positive ions like calcium 2 plus and negative ions like OH minus, for example. So basically, the more ions that are in the water, the higher the conductivity. Well, why does all this matter and how does it relate to the quality of drinking water? Well, certainly there are some highly conductive uh, waters that you can find that are also very healthy because they might contain tons of calcium and magnesium or other trace minerals that are good for you in reasonable concentrations. But it could also indicate the presence of lead or cadmium or mercury or molybdenum ions or some other heavy metals that you don't want in your water. Um, there's another reason, though, that conductivity is important. Because if the conductivity is very, very low, that can indicate that the water was passed through what's called a reverse osmosis filter. A reverse osmosis filter is essentially a membrane that only lets water and some very, very small things like, uh, I guess, H positive, which is a proton, to get through. And otherwise, uh, it blocks pretty much everything. Um, and the good news is, if in fact uh, it blocks all the other ions, or most of them, like lead 2 plus, for example, it's probably also blocking much, much bigger things like viruses and bacteria. So, in all likelihood, if you have a very low conductivity water sample, then it's probably free of all the rest of the nasty stuff too, like gasoline and pesticides, which are also much larger molecules. Um, of course, it's possible that uh, whoever passed it through the filter then added accidentally, or not accidentally, added some toxins after the fact. But I think the odds are, are lower that that happened than the odds that some uh, water with high conductivity uh, would have other pollutants in it. So uh, while it's not perfect, and while you'd probably need a, a huge expensive science lab to really determine what's in your water, I think a very good metric with very good statistical odds of, of being correct is indeed the conductivity. So if the conductivity is low, it's probably clean. If it's high, it's probably not so clean. So, um, and by the way, one notable exception, uh, there are some bottled waters that have reasonably high conductivity because they contain a lot of ions, which happen to be healthy ions. Now, I'm not saying that just because it's a highly conductive water sample that it's bad for you. What I'm saying is that if it's a barely conductive water sample, that it's probably safe for you to drink. Granted, if you're not getting trace minerals in your water, then you'll have to get them from somewhere else, because let's face it, we still do need some of those trace minerals. All right. So this particular uh, meter, again, it's made by HM Digital. This is the AquaPro water tester, otherwise known as an AP2. Um, basically, you take this cap off, and there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two little silver metal probes in there. I guess they're aluminum or chrome or stainless steel or something. And uh, you stick that in the water up to right under where this gray uh, screen panel is, because you don't want to get water under that. And you bang it against the side of the glass to get any bubbles out. And, uh, and there you go. And, or yeah, you have to press power first. I'm going to press power. comes on. It says zero micro siemens, because I'm not doing anything yet. And let's tap this against the side of the glass. Let's see if you can see that. That says about 173 micro siemens of conductivity at 28.0 Celsius. So uh, according to the little chart on the back here, let's see. Between 100 and 200 is carbon filters and mountain springs. So that's my tap water. So I guess my tap water is uh, pretty darn good. It says the US EPA's max contaminant level is 1,000 micro siemens. Uh, although I found um, from a very good water filter I have, um, I can actually produce my own water at about uh, 26 to 44 micro siemens. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Uh, but anyway, why this is useful? 
Um, it's, it's quite cheap. It's uh, less than about 40 bucks US. And basically you can take it with you when you're traveling to a weird place. And you don't know if you can trust the bottled water, because let's face it, they all say they're good for you, right? And you can fill up a, a glass with the bottled water like this. You can stick it in, press the button, and 10 seconds later, when the number stabilizes, you'll know whether it's uh, conductive, in which case it's questionable, not necessarily bad, or whether it's barely conductive, like under 20 uh, microsiemens, or under 10 microsiemens in some cases, in which case you can pretty much bet it's very clean water, except for bisphenol A. B-I-S-P-H-E-N-O-L-A. Bisphenol A is something you can Google. It's a plasticizer that's used in uh, water bottles, like as in bottled water. And over time, it leaks into the water, and it's really nasty stuff. And even worse, its boiling point is, I think, 220 Celsius. In any event, far in excess of water's boiling point. So if you were to boil this bottled water, you couldn't even get it out. Um, so I don't believe in living off bottled water, but for a few weeks while you're on vacation or a business trip, uh, that should be fine. But most definitely carry one of these with you. Um, all right, now that you understand this, you're ready for the next video where I'm going to show you how to make your own water from air.